Hey, this is Marcus. I'm back with another video. And in this one, I wanted to share a tip for shooting bird photography in overcast weather. I live in Seattle and it's pretty much overcast here most of the time. So this was a lesson that was hard learned for me, but it, uh, it's made a big difference in the quality of my images that I've gotten since starting to do this. So as I do this, I'm also gonna be uh, sharing a couple photos from a photo shoot that I had yesterday at a park near my house kind of to use them as examples. And then also you can see um, how images that are shot on the system that I use, which is Micro Four Thirds, and people always have lots of questions about the, the quality and the sharpness and if, if it's okay. Uh, you can see, you can use this video as an example to see if maybe uh, it would be a good enough system for you to use for bird photography. So just to preface that, I am using uh, Lumix G9 as the camera body and the Olympus 300 millimeter f4 uh, lens. So what's the tip? Um, I'm not gonna make you wait for it. The, the main tip is that you need to start shooting, if you're shooting on an overcast day, in full manual mode. And the key thing to do, uh, which is harder to do than it is to describe, is to get your exposure setting correct on something that doesn't include any sky and then leave it there and only change it if the shooting conditions change, meaning if the sun comes out or if you move into shade or something like that. So that's actually kind of one advantage of shooting on an overcast day is that the light is gonna be pretty much the same wherever you are, there's no sun to, to get in your way. So once you get the settings right, you can leave them in place and not worry about it. And you only have to think about it if you need to slow down the shutter for or, or speed it up to change the, the quality of the image, meaning you wanna, you have a stationary bird and you wanna get a higher, a lower ISO, so you lower the shutter that way. So like, for example, on, on these images, I went out yesterday, um, actually not planning on getting anything because it was pretty rainy and dark, but to get the exposure right for this heron, I pre-set it on the background, so on all those trees in the background, and then once I had it there, and you can see in this case, it ended up being uh, wide open, which I'm almost always shooting wide open at F4. Uh, I wanted to have at least a fairly high shutter speed with a big bird like a heron, having 800th of a second was fine. If it was a smaller bird, uh, I would definitely want more like 1200th of a second or faster if possible. But I was already at ISO 2500, which is pushing it pretty hard on uh, Micro Four Thirds because of the smaller sensor. But you can see the quality, there is some noise, but it's not too bad. Um, the next image, I believe, should be, have the same settings. So I didn't change anything, 800th of a second. It was still too fast, probably, for this flicker, which was pretty stationary. Um, and then here, I, had, I found a crow, uh, super rare, super impressive bird eating out of the shellfish. Uh, and the, the tough thing with crows is see, now I've moved from uh, having a busy background to having an all white background. And in this case, it actually doesn't really serve my example because I, I wanted to slower, I wanted to make the shutter speed slower. So I, I cut it in half down to one four hundredth of a second and lowered the ISO. So the if you're gonna be making these changes, the way you can think about it is for every stop for every click on your camera that you make to lower the shutter speed, make one click also to lower the ISO. And in order for that to really be effective, you'll wanna make sure that you have your camera set up to where you have the three main controls, which is shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, all accessible without any menus, um, if at all possible. So like on my camera, I have the aperture up here on this dial, the shutter speed on this one, and I set the ISO on this one. So I'm never having to, to go through menus and it doesn't, there's no mental resistance to changing the ISO because I can just reach my thumb down and rotate this knob and that, and that does it. So in this case, if I wanted to lower my shutter speed, three stops is click, 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 and then click, click, click here, and then I'm done. And then if I wanna go back up because there's a bird that's flying by, it's just three clicks here and three clicks here. Now, the, the reason for all of this is because your camera is going, the, and the biggest problem with shooting in um, 
overcast is because you see how the, the sky is completely white and so far I've never had the camera correctly meter for an all white sky or like in this case all white sky and all white water and you have a white bird it's going to severely uh, underexpose the image and this is actually there's a buffle head flying in the distance and usually I don't like these like super tiny birds but with the white water the white sky and then the little black and white bird I kind of like this one um, and then here again, the water is completely white, so this bird would have been way underexposed, and I would have had to bring the, the exposure up two or three stops if I accepted what the camera put it on. So again, I leave it on uh, full manual and wide open. I set the shutter speed to what I want it to be, and then expose get the, uh, the metering so sometimes I'll flip it to auto ISO, let the camera get the metering by pointing at something with a darker background, so no sky or no water in it. And then I'll take, then I'll switch back to full manual off of auto ISO, put it on the ISO that the camera determined with the darker background, and then shoot uh, towards the sky or towards the water with that ISO. And here also, I, you know, just as an example of what the Micro Four Thirds system can do, this is ISO 2000, this image, I feel like is pretty acceptable in terms of sharpness, especially like down here on the water and the bird. Um, not too bad for ISO 2000. Here I was trying uh, something a little different, which is you can see the shutter speed is all the way down to 1 13th of a second to get some motion blur in the water, uh, which kind of worked. Here, it worked out a little better. This could be sharpened up using Topaz Sharpen AI or some other type of sharpening just to get this eye a little bit sharper. But I do like the, the motion in the water with this pretty stationary bird. Um, here is lo even a lower shutter speed. So if you haven't noticed, I've kind of moved off of the original topic. Uh, now we're just looking at pictures that I took yesterday. So if you already got what you need to know, you can bail. Um, and then here, uh, this was a little bit too slow of a shutter speed, but this is a surf bird, and they seem to enjoy hanging out with the, the turnstones, the black turnstones, both of which uh, have a range all up and down the Pacific coast. So if you're in California, Oregon, or Washington, you've probably seen these, or maybe in Mexico. Um, but if you're not, then you probably haven't seen them because these are specific birds to, to this area, at least the surf bird for sure. I'm not sure if the turnstone has a wider range or not. Anyway, this is their relationship. They always hang out together and they're always super antagonistic to each other. Uh, but for some reason, you, you always, it seems like every time I see one, I see the other. Um, again, here's uh, all preset exposure. Uh, what happened here was the, a train went by and scared all the birds closer to me. So I got some pretty nice up close shots. But this is, again, I. Uh, Micro Four Thirds ISO 4000, and it's not a bad image. I haven't, I haven't done any de denoising or anything on this image. It's pretty sharp. Again, uh, this is basically straight out of camera, just uh, some adjustments to the curves. This one I do think I did some denoising on, but none of the rest. And the, the way this image, uh, so it has this background fading into a blur and then a blur in the front. There was actually a rock uh, just in front of the lower part of the lens. And then I was close to the bird. So that's why the back is faded out. And then the front is faded out because you're getting a little bit of the, the blur from that rock. And then the, behind the bird is just, it's just that white water. So I kind of like this look. Everyone loves a, a vent photo. And these are just a couple more examples of the the same bird on that white background. And this was a day where I was pretty sure going out based on the weather that there that nothing was gonna happen. Like it was raining and it was dark and it was windy and there was when I got there there were no birds. I saw that hair and I was like, oh that's probably the one photo I'll take today. And then the flicker and I took that one um, and then these these uh surf birds flew in, I think they're in the turnstones flew in, and I was able to spend some time with them. Um, 
after a while of messing around with the high key look, I started trying to get them in the waves, which is where their habitat is. You almost always see them along the rocks, uh, picking stuff off the rocks. I like how the wave came up in front of this one some. This is him yelling at the turnstone. Here you can see the rain. I wanted to get the raindrops longer, so I lowered the shutter speed down to a hundredth of a second, bumped, in this case, bumped the uh, aperture up to get a little more depth of field so none of the, the bird is blurred. And also I needed to, I could have actually bumped it back down and lowered the ISO, but uh, decided to get some, some of the texture on this rock in focus instead. Here's back down to F4 um, and sped up the shutter and you can see the difference in those raindrops. They're little specks here versus the lines there. And that's it. So basically the tip is shoot full manual, set your camera to where you can adjust the exposure, the, the aperture and the ISO using knobs if at all possible. Get your exposure by focusing on something with no water or sky in it. And then set, the, set it using full manual, set the ISO shutter and aperture, and then shoot using those settings, uh, not auto ISO, not auto anything. Uh, and you'll get you'll get good exposures. And then the only thing you have to do is remember that if the light changes or if you move into the shade, then you need to make the adjustments. But it took me a, it, it sounds like such a simple tip. It took me a long time to learn it, and when it did, uh, it made a huge difference. And it made it to where when I open Lightroom, I'm no longer having to go in and select all the photos that I took over a stretch and, and bump up the exposure on them, which. Uh, really can decrease the image quality, especially if you're shooting at high ISOs, like every single one of these photos, almost every single one of these is over ISO 2000. If I had to bump up the exposure, uh, they would almost have been unusable. So it's good to get that right in camera. And if you uh, watched this far, thanks for watching. Hopefully that tip's useful for you and I'll talk to you later.